This program will describe the general procedures for weighing aircraft. For specific fleet information, check the GNMM 3-0-0-17. Aircraft are weighed in order to keep track of not only their weight, but also their center of gravity. This information is vital in determining the amount of passengers and cargo that can be loaded on a flight and for determining the stabilizer settings for takeoff. The most difficult part of the weighing process is keeping track of what exactly is being weighed. Factors that influence the weight of the aircraft include the contents of the cabin, the contents of the cargo pits, the fluid levels in the systems, the condition of the outside of the aircraft, and the conditions that exist in the dock. The cabin has to be properly prepared before weighing it. A W strip of the cabin must be done. Remove the galley equipment, including galley carts and boxes, food and beverages, liquor and related supplies. Remove passenger service items, including pillows and blankets. Pull the literature and safety cards from the seat backs, wall pouches, and magazine racks. Clear the closets of passenger service items and remove all paper and amenities from the labs. Emergency equipment has to be left on the aircraft. Leave the fire extinguishers, life vests, demo equipment, queen carts, bassinets, and wheelchairs. The cargo pits should be prepared next. On 727-222As, extend the forward cargo pit loading system. Remove all the cargo containers, igloos, pallets, and pallet nets. Nets that are part of the aircraft, like bulk area divider restrainers or door safety nets, stay in the pits. Fluid levels must be accounted for. Defuel the aircraft and drain the sump tanks with the aircraft at its normal ramp attitude. Fill the potable water tanks. Some fleets have standpipes installed which prohibit filling the system to capacity. On these aircraft, fill the tanks until they overflow, or the tanks can be drained, whichever is easier. Just make sure the paperwork reflects the condition that exists. Service the labs to an L1 condition. Fill the labs to the correct charge, flush them once, and leave them full. An alternate configuration is to drain the labs. Record which condition is present at the time of weighing. Leave engine, CSD, and APU oil levels full. And all hydraulic reservoirs and oxygen systems full. The condition of the outside of the aircraft can also influence weight and center of gravity. Put doors, windows, and flight control surfaces in their in-flight crew's position. Windows and doors should be closed, leading edge devices retracted, and rudder, ailerons, and elevators set to neutral. On the 727, secure the leading edge flaps with tape to keep them retracted during jacking. The landing gear stays extended. The center gear on DC-10-30s can be either retracted or extended. Just make sure to note which is the case. On 747s, the wing gear must be locked in the collapsed position and the bogey must be strapped in order to keep the truck from tilting when weighing on the axles. Make sure the aircraft's free of all non-flight items such as tools, maintenance equipment, and personnel. The exterior must be dry. Conditions inside the dock can also influence the weight. The aircraft must be fully enclosed by the dock with no part of the dock structure touching the aircraft. Turn off any air blowers, close the dock doors and windows, and clear the dock of personnel not involved with weighing. Extend the nose strut in order to pre-level the aircraft. The aircraft has to be pre-leveled and defueled before jacking to minimize side loads on the load cells. Side loads cause inaccurate readings and large side loads can peel a load cell from a jack or push the aircraft off the load cell or the cage. The aircraft can be jacked by one of two methods. One method is to use tripod jacks with weighing cages. For a review of jacking with tripod jacks, check videotape TV0026. 
The other method is to use axle jacks. GNMM 3-0-0-17 Appendix A gives details and shock strut measurements to use with axle jacks. Low axle jacks, specifically designed for aircraft weighing, will normally fit under an axle when carrying a load cell. These jacks will be used in this program. In order to weigh a 727-200, install a fuselage nose ballast to stabilize the aircraft during jacking. The aircraft is weighed with the weight installed. Make sure the aircraft is level. Install the load cells on the jacks and position the jacks under the axles. Load cells are heavy and are precision calibrated equipment. This load cell used for 747s weighs about 35 pounds. If a cell's dropped, it has to be shipped back to the factory for recalibration. Position the wire leads from the weigh kit so that they won't get damaged or run over by equipment. Connect the wire leads from the weigh kit to the load cells. Each lead is color-coded and calibrated to match a particular cell. Hand tighten the connectors. Don't use a wrench. Turn on the weigh kit power switch and the load indicator switch. Select a cell by turning the knob. Then adjust the zero set knob until the null needle reads zero. This will help in determining when a load cell is carrying weight. Extend the jacks until there's a 500 to 1,000 pound load on the nose and a 1,000 to 5,000 pound load on each main gear. The tires should be on the floor. Let the weigh kit warm up for at least 30 minutes with weight on the load cells to ensure thermal and electrical stabilization. While the kit warms up, verify that the aircraft and dock meet the weighing requirements described earlier and outlined in the GNMM. It's also a good time to bottle check the sumps to make sure they're empty. Fuel left on board is the most common reason for inaccurate weighings. After the kit has warmed up and the inspector is satisfied, remove the weight from the load cells. Make sure that each load cell will clear its respective axle. The inspector is responsible for setting up the weigh kit. On the R130 kit only, the mode switch has to be set at COMP, then the inspector can proceed as usual. Verify that the load indicator switch is on, and that the vernier thumb wheels are set to zero. Check that the initial load knob is also set to zero. Set the cell selector knob to cell number one. Adjust the cell number one zero set knob until the null needle is at zero. Repeat the zero set process for the rest of the load cells. Then turn off the load indicator switch. Bring the load cells back in contact with the axles. Then jack the aircraft, making sure to keep it level. All the tires should be off the floor. Remove the aircraft leveling equipment and close the main landing gear doors. Set the cell selector knob to cell number one. Set the initial load knob and thumb wheels to the weight value on the weight forecasted for that aircraft position. Turn on the load indicator switch. Use the thumb wheels to adjust the null needle indication to zero. Make the last thumb wheel adjustment in the increasing direction. When the null needle has stabilized, Record the weight reading on the appropriate paperwork. Repeat the process for each load cell. When all the weight readings are recorded, recheck the values. Adjust the readings for small changes. But if there's a large discrepancy, refer to the troubleshooting section of the GNMM 3-0-0-17, page 14. Lower the aircraft to the dock floor. Remove all the weight from the load cells so that the cells clear the axles. If tripod jacks are used, verify the load cells move freely in the cages. Use the null meter to verify that the cells are unloaded. 
A large needle deflection to the right indicates that the cells are still carrying weight. Since the cells are unloaded, determine the zero shift. With the load indicator switch on and the initial load knob and vernier thumb wheel set to zero, verify that the null needle reads zero for each cell. If it doesn't, use the thumb wheels to determine the number of pounds that the zero set has shifted. Use the initial load knob to select minus values. Record the zero set shift. If the zero set shift exceeds 20 pounds for any load cell, the aircraft has to be reweighed. Calculate and record the zero shift correction for each load cell. Calculate the corrected weight for each load cell reading by adding the zero shift correction to the weight. Add together the corrected readings for the left, right, and nose to determine the total aircraft weight. On wide body aircraft, there are two readings for each main gear. Add them together to determine the total weight for the gear. Check the left, right, nose, and total weights against the weights on the forecast. If it's out of tolerances, recheck the aircraft and dock configuration, then reweigh the aircraft. If it's still out of tolerances after reweighing, or if there are problems with equipment, refer to the troubleshooting section of the GNMM. Remove the load cells from the jacks and return the jacks to the weigh cart. Be careful not to crimp the load cell leads when rolling them up for packing. Pack the weigh kit so it can be returned to the tool crib. The inspector is responsible for the paperwork. Make sure that the aircraft dock configuration record card, aircraft weight data record card, and the equipment operations record card are complete. Then take the three aircraft weighing record cards to the airframe inspection office for distribution. To complete the job, fill in the FAA required Unimatic display page. Refuel the aircraft and get it ready to return to service by reloading the equipment that was taken out for the weighing. Aircraft weighing can be a simple process if the time is taken to do the job right. By working as a team and using the tips outlined in this program, the chances of getting erroneous readings will be minimized.